Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scope. And now, here are your hosts, Jared, Adam, and Shane. Hidey ho, Scopers. Episode 170. We are starting it now. 170. 170. You know what this marks? What does it mark? We're, we're a couple days short as of when this episode releases, but this will be our ninth year of production we're entering. Sorry. Ninth year. <laughs> what are we We doing? started in 2006. Are you serious? It, yes. We started. <laughs> we are so stupid. Our first, <laughs> our first episode was released April 10th, 2006. And is now 2014. You do the math. It's gonna catch on. You do Real the math. Here. This ah. is actually the last episode in our eighth year. Our next episode will be the first episode in our ninth year. Could we be one of the longest running podcasts? Probably. I mean, there's definitely some that started before us, but we're up there. I mean, other than a few breaks here and there, we've been contiguous since 2006, folks. Are we going to be in the podcasting hall of fame? Probably. We, we don't deserve it. So we no. probably don't. <laughs> we could be janitors. J- for Jared this deserves it. What, uh, what do I do? What did I do? The production values. Oh, okay. since day what one. about the content guy? What no, about me? No. <laughs> wow. And I haven't been here for more than 10 or 12 episodes. Yeah. So I definitely am not. So, yeah, I don't think we have a big uh, to do about it. Maybe when we hit yeah. our 10th year, we'll we'll uh, have a big to do. But yeah. Or if we hit episode 200, we'll probably do something special. But for now, I just wanted to commemorate what? the occasion. I just wanted to mark it. I want In- people to know. But since 2006, we've been bringing you podcast entertainment. So what is ninth year like? Styrofoam? <sighs> what is ninth year? Yeah, styrofoam. Mm-hmm. Clay. <laughs> it's a clay, like a really, really shitty clay. That really, right. that's a I think in the ashtray. I think in the in the media world, it's probably like a microphone cable or something. Yeah. We give each other some sort of uh, piece of software. I don't know. I like it. But yeah, we've been. Uh, I mean, we've gone through some changes. We've we've obviously we're doing video now. Right that's here. a big deal. I'm looking at it. Um, you know, we keep upgrading equipment. Yeah. I have my eyes on a digital mixer, which Ooh. I probably shouldn't buy, but I really want. <laughs> you know what I would like, Jared? Yeah. I was just thinking about this on the way over. What, for the beginning of our ninth year, mm-hmm. I would like a sound effect that's a spoiler warning klaxon of some sort. So uh, you need, between this show and the next one, you need me to <laughs> add a sound effect. <laughs> well, we're, we're recording the next show next week, so you're right. good Right. Yeah, plenty of time. <laughs> All right, you want a klaxon, yeah, like a like a like a something. I have one somewhere. Okay, you- because I actually have. I I, I want to talk briefly about something that could be major spoilers for people that haven't seen Captain America, and I just would like to. Okay. Because I've been thinking about it. You know what is one interesting thing that I always think podcasts should add when they talk about spoilers hmm. is that it, in post production, someone should go back and say, "Hey, if you want to skip this, go to the ten minute." 10 second mark that's what would make this show great in the ninth year <laughs> yeah is 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 instructing people to skip parts of the show that would be a good thing uh i think i'd like to do a little call to action now if that's all right yes since we're ending our eighth year and we're entering our ninth mm-hmm. uh, i would like to put it out to the audience to comment either preferably call in the voicemail line 612 21 scope uh but if you don't want to call in if you want to just write us an email or tweet at us or something, but I want to hear about what your favorite scope moment is yeah. over the last eight years. And really, Think about it. And when we ask for comments, really all we're saying is, please, John or Luke, call him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to reach out to the, the larger audience, yeah. the audience that doesn't comment very often. We do have some other commenters who, who write in frequently, yeah. but uh, anyone and everyone within the, uh, the, the reach of our voices, come on. What's that? What's, what's your favorite moment of the last eight years? It doesn't have number? to... 612 scope. What's it? That's 612 I think. There you go. Yeah. This Jared is a smart guy. I still don't know the phone number. No, me either. I wouldn't know. It's in my phone. I'm supposed to call it when you I'm You can drunk. remember 612 scope, though, because that's pretty easy. You would think. You'd think. You would think. Luke C knows it, that's for sure. I love it. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a call coming up later on. Uh, so, yes, Excellent. just uh, let us know what your favorite moment is. If you're if you're a new listener. It's, it's not it's not Luke Ski, according to Google Voice. It's Lip Sky. <laughs> yeah, Lip Ski. <laughs> Lip Sky. <laughs> I love the Google Voice Translate. That's fun. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's just it. I, just, just, I want to hear what your favorite moments are from the last eight years. Um, one per customer, please. There we go. One per customer. I was, uh, and, and just to go back and delve into our history, I told you about this yesterday when we were uh, meeting for dinner. Um, I we was, met for dinner, by the way. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to hijack invite. your agenda here, but I'm just sort of, these are things popping into my head. So okay. I was listening to a recent Nerdist podcast episode mm-hmm. uh, with Eric Stone Street, star of Modern Family. He was on. And uh, they ended up playing a game. Hit, hit the Post. 
What? Yes. They were, uh, I think, um, I don't remember how they exactly got on the topic, but Chris Hardwick has done, you know, some radio in his past. So he's aware of what the post is. And so he was explaining what it was <laughs> and what you're supposed to do. Uh, and then they just sort of started, and, and Eric wanted to try it. So they, I forget the song they played. Is but, that Cam? Is that Eric? Yeah, I think it's Cam. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, a, a dual Emmy winner. Come on, you should know who he is. Yeah. By the uh, way, Cam, uh, Mr. Stone Street, sort of goes out of his way, at least on Stern, mm-hmm. when he's on Stern, to be very macho. <laughs> like all his stories tend to be about his uh, his uh, coxmanship and <laughs> and how how he's sort of a man, mm-hmm. uh, tr- and probably in contrast to him being sure. extremely feminine on on Modern Family in a very successful way. He wants everyone to know he's just acting. He's just acting. All right, maybe a little overcompensation. Mitchell, on I, the other hand, I think is gay. In real he life. is, and okay. he's a very similar. But anyway, Jared, anyway, we hijacked the long your hijack sh- story. The long and short of it is, they sort of traded off trying to hit the post on this one song and Aaron Eric was uh, amazed that Chris Hardwick could do it because obviously he has experience but uh, they started talking about how like oh this is the game this is the greatest we got to copyright this and blah 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 stuff like that and I'm thinking hey didn't we do that back in 2006 and in fact we did 2006 and 2007 we'd played hit the post two times it was a fantastic game uh, due to modern uh, uh, media restrictions and the fact that we're on YouTube it, it makes it very difficult for us to do it right now um, but maybe we'll revisit it again. But I just wanted to remind people that. Uh, so let me ask you, Jared. we did it. We did it. I don't. I'm not gonna say we did it first because obviously we were inspired by what Howard Stern was doing. At yeah, the but, time. But we we, the we formalized. Is, we turned it. it into a game. I mean, it wasn't just trying to hit the post. We put certain parameters you, around. Songs. I hope you tweeted it at him. You might say we did tweet it. At you him. might say we codified it. Yes, <laughs> I think we codified it. <laughs> Yes, I did say, I did so from the scope of content and say, hey, listen, listening to Eric Stone Street and Nerdist playing Hit the Post, a game we tackled in 2006, and I put a link to the article. I don't expect that uh, I'll get any official response from Nerdist Enterprises, but hey, so, I threw it out there. I'll let him know that I know. Let, I me, know. let me ask you a question, Jared. If Watching they, you, Nerdist. If, <laughs> if they were to try to copyright that, would we have a case where... We have we, prior art. If we wanted to contest it, we have definitely have prior art. I like it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that we would we would want to, you know, yeah. take on that legal responsibility. But you know, yeah. Now that Amazon's not giving us money anymore, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do anything with no. it. I mean, but well, we'll I just see. I just think it was interesting that they were like, "Whoa, look at this great game we look can what play." We figured out. And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, it is a great game. We did it six years yeah. ago, <laughs> eight sure years wrong. ago." Oh God, math. <laughs> well, that is something else, Adam. I love it, Jared. I love it. You know what? Hmm. Let's skip our spoiler stuff. We'll come back to it next episode. We've got a lot of show, so let's jump into it. Uh, today's show is all about news. So this is an Adam centric. The same way you introduce every third every time. <laughs> every time. Uh, we're hoping for wrestling news, perhaps. It's all wrestling. Wrestling. All the time. Wrestling. Hillbilly Jim, perhaps, is back in the news headlines. I don't know if that's a wrestler. Hillbilly Jim certainly is a wrestler. All right. Jared, you know Hillbilly Jim. Yeah. Hacksaw Macho Jim Man? Duggan? Yeah. Macho Man uh, Macho. Is, is, <laughs> or was a wrestler. Yes, he's dead now. Macho I, Man. Macho I, was Man do, I was doing Randy some Macho Savage. Man this, uh, Ooh, this past yeah. weekend. Oh, yeah. Mustaches. Video scoping. <laughs> yeah. Miss Elizabeth. Classic. And then you have. I need, I, we, don't, we need to get some. I need to get some Macho Man on my yeah. soundboard. And maybe some. The iron, time has come. So maybe some Iron Cheek too, talking about how great Miss Elizabeth is. <laughs> anyway, we've got news. We've got. <laughs> we've got uh, coming soon. We've got hit it or miss it. We've got Jared. We've got Adam. We've got me. And the Shame. audience. And the All audience. You too. And you guys are using this time. I'm looking at the camera. You're using this time to think of comments to send to us for our favorite s- moments. Our, our last clay years. ashtray anniversary. <laughs> Nine years. Clay. Is that like an un- a, un- unfired? Just, just you just make it out of clay? Is it unfired, Adam? Oh, yeah. Because well, once you fire the, it, it's porcelain, right? The, uh, or the, ceramic. The cigarette sticks in there way better yeah. if it's still soft. Well, so it, would dry, it would dry, but it's going to be unfinished. It's going to be... You're, you're talking a middle school project here. You don't know how moist my house school. is. When we talk, really? It never dries. You when live we, in a humidor. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Is we, it because you always have cigars everywhere. <laughs> just just partial cigars waiting to be lit and enjoyed at a moment's notice. And grape leaves always on, yep. on tap. When we talk clay... I, <laughs> how, do you, how do you put grape, <laughs> grape leaves on leaves. Ta- And Jade wanted to get out of this segment so bad. <laughs> I wanted to add to it, and I'm not. So <laughs> we'll stick around, guys. We've got more 170 coming at you right after this. Attention fans of funny music. The first ever comedy music convention is here with performances by Carrie Dalby, Devo Spice, Garden Fresh, The Great Luke Ski, Tony Goldmark, Matt Griffo, Dan Hart, Insane Ian, Phil Johnson, Possible Oscar, Power Salad, Raymond and Skull, Sea Monkey, Tom Smith, and Worm Quartet. And presenting this year's special guest of honor, legendary radio personality, Dr. Demento. (laughs) 
Funk Fest is taking place June 20th through 22nd at the Western North Shore in Wheeling, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Tickets for the weekend are just $35 until March 31st. Join us for live concerts, panels, Dr. Demento's Festival of Dementia, Demented Karaoke, a Q&A with Meat Morph Studios, and the fourth annual Logan Whitehurst Memorial Awards for Excellence in Comedy Music, hosted by Dr. Demento. Hi, this is Dr. Demento. Come join me and my friends from the FUMP at FUMPFest this June in Chicagoland. Visit FUMPFest.com to register for the event and reserve your hotel now. That's F-U-M-P-F-E-S-T dot com. Under the, under, the, under the scope. Oh, oh, are we back? Yeah, we're back. <laughs> hey, we're back. <laughs> doing homework. Sorry, doing my homework right now. <laughs> my pre-calc. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? What? This episode of The Scope, we're doing a little something called news. This oh, oh, are we back? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this might be my best news. I don't wow. Believe I don't believe it. How many stories? 17? Uh, no, we not, told you to keep it to 17. Not so. quantity. Okay. Quality. Qualitatively. Wow. Did they find the plane? <laughs> uh, we're actually just going to play CNN Live now for the next <laughs> 10 minutes. And go. Jared, do you have some sort of ping sound? Um, at 37 megahertz? 37.5. Is that what it is? Yeah. Hertz. That's my I think it's just hertz, not even megahertz. Broom. It's that slow. That's my approximation of a sonar ping. Broom. I think it's pretty... Accurate. As uh, someone that's never heard a sonar ping yeah. before, I'm going to say, sounds like a movie. For someone that doesn't know what sonar or a ping is, I think it's on point. All right. Mo- uh, news. Mm-hmm. Got some movie news. Oh, I thought it might be how the Nerdist is ripping us off. With, no, that's, uh, we, Jared already broke that last <laughs> segment. We got to come back to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you guys know Richard Donner, best known as the director of... <gasps> yeah. The Family Feud. He was the host. <laughs> Goonies. Uh, Goonie. Uh, <laughs> no. host of Goonie. No, he was a director. <laughs> a director I, of Goonies. This is not going to come in at all, but uh, it is, yes, as my notes say, Goonies director Richard Donner. I saw this story. Quick question. Says a sequel is in the works. Quick question. Nice. Uh, uh, singular of Goonies, is it spelled with a Y or an IE? It says Goon at that point. I don't think it's Goonie. No, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, because a Goonie is a diminutive of a goon. So A little goon. <laughs> yeah. <A> little goon. <laughs> L-I-L apostrophe. Goon. I'm writing that down. Right. I'm going to send that to Mr. Donner. Ooh, you know, in, in Espanol, it's Goonito. <laughs> oh, are we going to do this again? <laughs> <laughs> That's next episode. It's all, okay. our, all Espanol episode. Anyway, see. I did not see this. This must have happened while I was out of the country. Uh, I just Goonies, saw it last night. Goonies oh, director, sorry, I was here and not paying attention. Yeah. Goonies director Richard Donner says a sequel to the beloved 1985 film is on the way. Goonies never die, after all. Goonies never say die. After well, it followed the plot of the Goonies 2 video game. Uh, yes. Okay. The, the, you mean the game none of us beat because yeah. it was impossible? <laughs> oh, yes. So who knows how that one even ends. <laughs> I, I, I thought it will follow the travails of Sloth not being able to find a baby Ruth Aww. in the store. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> They're very difficult to find nowadays. Um, in a video <laughs> shot by it's TMZ, true. the Superman director is asked uh, if he would ever do another comic book movie, and he said, "If you call the Goonies a comic book, then yes." We're I doing do not a call sequel. it a comic book. I don't it's know. Never why, been a comic book. I don't know why he. Was, I think he just wanted to find some way of telling people he's still relevant. Mm. And there we go. Uh, Sean he probably, Astin. He probably want to do a comic book of like Lil Abner. <laughs> yes. Comic book movie. <laughs> Lil that's Abner. A, that's what he's thinking. Uh, and the Lil Goon. Uh, uh, Sean Astin uh, told IGN in 2012 that he'd absolutely be on board for mm-hmm. a second film. Sh- shocking anyone, yeah. right? What about uh, Corey? That's the real question. <laughs> oh. No, he's still, that's a different <laughs> Corey. Oh, yeah, you're right. Corey, was, it's Corey Feldman still alive, right? Well, unfortunately. Yes, Feldman is still alive and still par- apparently attempting terrible music. He, uh, I actually read some interest, an interesting article about him on, on Vice about how he likes to throw these big house parties. And people can pay to get to go in, and it's supposed to show his lavish lifestyle and yeah. all these hot chicks. And par- <laughs> that's not the klaxon I want. <laughs> it sounds like wow. a jalopy coming into the garage. It's an old time klaxon. <laughs> go ahead. But uh, yeah, so Corey <laughs> Corey throws these parties, and it's supposed to be full of hot chicks and all these you know up and comers, and it's usually like five depressing guys with a Street Fighter video game machine that's not even plugged in, and Corey doesn't talk to anybody. It's like called like Corey's Angels or something like that. Yeah. Look it up. No, it sounds too. It's too super depressing. depressing. Did I you already see, hate him. So, did you yeah. see the clip going around? I, I, I don't want to turn this into the Corey Feldman hour, but uh, there was a clip going around from a Howard Stern's Channel Nine show back in like the '80s or early '90s, yeah. where he does a just Corey Feldman does a terrible song, but he comes out dancing like he thinks he's Michael Jackson. Yeah, that was his thing. Like he really thought he was. I mean, he was buddies with Michael Jackson. It's very strange. He's a weird guy. 
Anyway, I want to hear more about this story about the little goons. <laughs> goonie tunes. Come on. Little goons. Goonie tunes? Goonie um, tunes. Oh, come on. Let's get so it. So the story does- Can we get goonie babies? Does bring up, uh, what about <laughs> Corey Feldman and yeah. Josh Brolin, right? They, I, thought, I thought they asked Josh about it not that long ago, and he was- Nope. He's getting there. <laughs> Uh, Feldman, uh, anyway, uh, was quoted as saying, I'm betting no child on this matter. I don't know what that means, but uh, he's not betting his he, own child he's saying on it happening. unlikely that it would happen, yeah. Adam. I think that's what he's getting at. Um, Read between the lines. <laughs> so uh, Donner was, was asked uh, uh, which cast members from the original uh, would return, and he says, hopefully all of them. Even so, the dead ones. Right. So mm. I, I don't know what, what any of this means. Uh, what's the last thing that Richard Was Donner it Martha did? Plimpton in that one? Yes, she was. Yeah. She's still around. Well, she's, still yeah, she just, she's her free show, now. Her show just got yeah. canceled. Oh, she's available. Raising so. hope, Jared. Mm -hmm. uh, they so needed to raise some more hope because they didn't get... Uh, Entertainment Weekly is uh, theorizing this may be more like Ghostbusters 3 than uh, anything else. You know, where just you have one person trying to do it because there's... Or maybe the, ki the kids of the original Goonies are out for another adventure or something like that. Sure. I mean, that's always a way to go. Sure. You think Short Round has a, has a kid mm -hmm. running around? We I need to... Reinsert racial stereotypes into. <laughs> Wait, was that the, the same kid who played Short Round and Data with I the mean, same probably actor? Probably not, right? Oh, well, let's look it up. We Jared? got the internet. Clacks on it up. No, fact checking ruins podcasts. What are you doing? Let's I'm just, just assume I'm right. Okay. I mean, I'm sure I'm not right. I would say you're right. You think so? Mm -hmm. There's only one small Asian boy. I would say that you're on the on only on one that. was allowed on film at the time. <laughs> that was the 80s. What are you going to do? Jared is looking it up. Okay. So I think that's probably not because I think the years are too. Because what's go ahead. his name no, uh, from Revenge of the Nerds was was older or not Revenge of the Nerds. Goonies was eighty five, right? Yep. yep. Uh, eighty four was. Yeah, but it was probably filmed in eighty three. Okay, yeah, same guy. Man, I sure know a lot what about do you know? movies. What do you know? Shane he was also stuff. in Encino yeah. Man. Just so you know, of course, Encino Man. And then where is he? Uh, hmm. What has right. he done recently? Moving on. He's done nothing since 2002. Serving up the new Taco Bell breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> I think it's time for Jonathan Kikwan to get back in the game. Get in. Goonies Jonathan. 2. Please. Perfect. Electric Boogaloo. Um, moving on. Yeah. You ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. Did you guys watch the uh, finale of a uh, certain rom-com sitcom this uh, this past week? Yep. Go yep. past it. We'll talk about that another time, okay. another show. The DVDs will include an alternate ending. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, can, well, we can talk about the alternate that's ending. That's news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay. The DVDs will include an alternate ending. Yeah, yeah I heard uh, that they had, uh, and it wasn't... Uh, well, you can tell your story, and then we can comment. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you for allowing me to tell my story. Uh, <laughs> as the debate continues over the polarizing ending of CBS's How I Met Your Mother, uh, which concluded an impressive nine-season run on Monday, executive producer Carter Bays has revealed that the show's complete series DVD uh, will include an alternate ending. Bays described the alternate ending as... Very different, in quotes, uh, from the one that actually aired. I've heard it's not that different. Well, I mean, it, f from what I've heard is that they had a whole bunch of footage, and then through the magic of editing, they came up with these two different endings. So yeah. really, how different could it be? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it's I'm, just going to be Ted's mouth free, uh, freeze frame, and then them like splicing in words yeah. from mm -hmm. uh, from other things to say something else. Yeah, they should do like a slow like clutch cargo, a slow <laughs> 1990s morph from from uh, Ted's face to Bob Saget's face. You know, just <laughs> oh, like the black or white video. Something and like that's that. how yeah, I became white. Bob Saget. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's the other spinoff, the one that's actually going to make it to air. Not how I met your dad. <laughs> yeah. it's how I became Bob Saget. I would watch that. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a documentary. Got like All right. Eggs. Another CBS TV news. Oh, that's a, We've got the most relevant network. Well, it really is. The most two relevant, I'd say, TV stories this week were the finale of How I Met Your Mother and the announced retirement of David Letterman. That's ah, a big one. I like how people are kind of almost eulogizing him as if he's already done. Yes. They're like, he's got, oh, they're talking about his big impact on, on comedy and writing essays and doing videos. And it's like, guys, he's not retiring until next year. Yeah. Maybe keep it, some. It could be a year and a half before keep, the guy keep actually some in the tank. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, so odds makers are keep going. <laughs> There's odds makers. <laughs> odds makers are uh, placing their their bets uh, as to are who these, will replace. Are these theoretical odds makers, or there's there's actually a back room in Las Vegas where like these you know are the what? bravado odds makers in Las Vegas. I wow, don't, I don't think you can I, actual odds makers. Legally, you can't have that because there's pe there are people that know. Shane, these are odds makers justifying. You their can existence. bet on anything. What are you I talking know, about legally? I just I guess I'd want to be you, a CBS executive. You know, I'd lay a million dollars. Look, of look, if you're an odds maker and your job is to make odds on things, you got to keep that skill sharp. Yeah, so what you do is 
when you're not making odds on actual great events like Super Bowls and you know and NCAA Final Four, you're, you're, you're making odds on on esoteric things like television. Yeah. Who's going to replace David okay. Letterman? And, and maybe just, you can't maybe you can't bet on it. Jared. That's just to keep the skills right. sharp. Maybe, I mean, maybe there's no betting involved. That's I mean, like, that's you like, and I could bet, and I could sure. say I've got three to one odds that Stephen Colbert is the yeah. leader right it's now. Like I practicing think your Stephen rudiments. Colbert will get it. What do you think, Jared? Well, I, if he wants it, it sounds like he wants it. It's interesting. So, will, would he be in character? I would no, say no. No, no. I would say no. So that character and Ching Chong Ding Dong would <laughs> b- both I be love gone. Ching Chong Ding Dong. He's been Forever. doing that character for a decade, yeah. though. Do you, I know. Don't you think still, he's tired of it? It's by still now? fresh. I mean, it's still great. I it would, still tricks people. I would yeah. think. I would love for him to do that character forever. But yeah, I don't know just, that creatively he wants to do it I'm forever. Sure. So he used to go on like the very first time he went on Conan after starting his show, he went on in character. Yeah, and he did that for a few more times, and then eventually he he stopped. Um, I, I, I'm surprised that John Stewart is so far down this list. They have they have him uh, at seven to one odds, and I'm sure like they. John take, Stewart gets paid a lot of money, though. That's the other. He thing. doesn't get paid CBS money. Yeah, but still. I think John Stewart is is more apt to stay where he is just because I think he really feels like he's doing good work. There. He's sure. the anch- he's sort of the anchor of that, you know, of the block anyway. I mean, it's John Stewart first, Colbert second. Even if you like Colbert better, it's more about the Daily Show. That's what I think. I mm-hmm. think I think and because Colbert is a character. I don't feel like John Stewart could transition to a traditional late night environment where you're interviewing guests and doing a monologue and maybe doing some wacky right. bits here and there. And not being as well as Colbert might. Right. I mean, I think John Stewart has his niche. And that is political commentary, mm-hmm. you know, right there. I, I think, think that's a good fit. For I him. think Stewart's show is weakest when he's interviewing famous people, right? Because I don't, I don't like do his celebrity anything. interviews. Yeah. It's, it, he tends to be a kiss up, and you know they're giggling a lot. I, I like, I like his political I, stuff. I skip all of his celebrity interviews because yeah. I don't care about celebrity interviews for the most part. Yeah, not on that. <laughs> Unless show, it's like a pretty like, lady, like Sam Jackson was on, and I watched it. A pretty lady, Sam Jackson, wow. exactly. Handsome Samantha or, Jackson, or a pretty lady. I will watch her walk out and see how how she's yeah. doing. Because I'm a guy, and I'm like, okay. So who else is on Keep your list? Who All else right. is on your list? So some of them are surprising to me. They have Chelsea Handler at a 5-1 no, odds. Negative. Not, no way. Zero chance. Zero chance. Uh, Craig Ferguson at 7-2. to two. I get it, but I don't think he'll... I don't... I don't. Craig Ferguson's show, by the way, is incredibly good. Yeah. It is such a good show. But it's I an just, oddball show that I don't know it would play I mean, he, well he has, an hour He has a earlier. robot skeleton. Yes. yes. I mean, what... It's great. You can't Made ha- by you, the Mythbusters guy. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's amazing how quick it and how terrific he is, but I just don't. I don't. And his I, interviews are like uh, he makes a mockery. Yeah. He's just like I'm not asking these questions. I think that's just a, a bit. But the interviews are great yeah. because they're not interviews. They're just whatever happens. Yeah, it's 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 a very fun show to watch. Uh, we've got Conan O'Brien on there. How much do you think hmm. Conan is kicking himself for not waiting a couple more years? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, who, who knows what would have happened. But Conan's inter- it's an interesting situation with him because he doesn't get great ratings right. on TBS. He's definitely got a niche relative to TBS ratings, though. Is how well does he do? I, I guess I'm I'm pulling that from relative from late night ratings. Sure. I don't I don't know. I'm it's good enough for TBS to keep him on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he does. He is one of those guys that does make a lot of waves uh, on the internet, which is the way a lot of people watch late night nowadays. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's you know what have you done for me in in the last, uh, you know, for a bit that's four minutes long, and we'll come back to it. And, yeah. You know, I find myself watching Conan's bits, and I'm talking about his comedy bits, not his privates, <laughs> more often than any of the other sure. late night guys. Just Even more often than Jimmy Kimmel? More often than Jimmy Kimmel. Interesting. Let me let me run through some more here and just Go ahead. G- yeah. give me your quick uh, thoughts. Jerry Seinfeld. Mm, He'd never do it. No. So forget Neil it. Patrick Harris. No. I like Neil, but not as a late. Louis C.K. I don't think he would do it. No either. way he would ever do that. That was the entire plot line from last season on on Louis. Yeah, was him I, replacing Letterman. That's true. I don't see that happening. Chris Rock. Maybe. Chris Rock had a show on HBO. He did. Maybe, but Chris Rock. I mean, that's you're talking network, and I mean, that's a that's a commitment. He's, he's real edgy though, and it's a mm-hmm. career change for him. Right. You know, for him, he could do. He can't do, he can do a movie. He could do a movie a year, right. two movies a year. Do stand up on the road if he wants to. I don't. I Tina don't. Fey. Maybe. I don't know. Ellen DeGeneres. Hmm. And then the last three are comedy options. I J- could see Ellen. Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Alex too unhinged. Although if, I like if, him, if but he he's had unhinged. not gone crazy these last two years, yeah. I would say he'd have a decent. Chance. I think he sure. sort of torpedoed himself with how his MSNBC show sort of <laughs> went down the tubes. Yeah. And then here's the best one: 
there's, uh, I'd say zero chance, but the most interesting one to consider. And is it true that Letterman is going to produce the show, so he has, he has some say in this, or is that not true? I don't know if he's producing the show, but he okay. owns the he owns the rights to the Late Show. Yeah. Okay. So if they have that show, it has to be called that. And I, I don't know if that ties into producing. So how about this? So it would go through his production company, Worldwide Pants, just yeah. like the Late Late Show does. Exactly. But sure. He may not be directly but, in but control of it. They're also saying, by the way, just to, before you do sure. that, that that Craig Ferguson could be out as well. Sure. That they just retool the entire night. That's another. That's another possibility. I think that's a shame. I, I don't know what Ferguson's ratings are, but creatively, I think yeah. it's it would be a shame to lose him. Howard Stern, forty to one odds. Never, <laughs> never, <laughs> no. never. What about giving him the Craig Ferguson spot? I don't think Howard would want that. No, no. I think that he. If I he, know he, he know you know he wants to transition to TV. If though. he were to take it four nights a week, yeah, I don't think that he. That's the issue. He's he's getting old and he doesn't want to necessarily. I think it's way less that. work than than waking up early and doing a three or four hour TV show or a radio show. I don't know. I don't I, know if I'd want to see it that way. Yeah, I know. I feel like he's going to make it at some point. He's going to have to have a show because he's going to be done with radio at some point. Has to, right? I mean, when this contract's up, I don't feel like Stern's coming back to radio. I don't know about that. Really? I think they're talking about it. I, okay. I, I think that it's very possible he does come back. You think he'd do both, though? He wouldn't do both. He no. wouldn't do both. The, prob- the problem is, and I think Howard knows... You know, we're going to get a big Howard Stern conversation, but he knows where his strengths are, and his strengths are long form interviews. There's so, nothing true. that says so, that this show's format sure. needs to be like everyone else's. So, so format. for him to to be able to do that, he's not going to be able to do as much any, as much or any of the Randy stuff that he does. Mm-hmm. Um, even though that's not as much as part of his show as what people think it is, at least it hasn't been in the last five years or so. So he would have to a be able to change the flip the script on what a late night show would be, and he'd have to have a lot a lot of terms that are specifically for him and that are new to him. Yep. So I just don't I just don't know if if they would ever go to those lengths to to make him happy for a long time. Ever since and, and, and if he'd want to do it. Ever since the Chris yeah. Rock show went away, I always thought it made a lot of sense if HBO did the three seasonal hour long talk shows that were weekly. You have Bill Maher's show. Now you're gonna have. John Oliver's show, which I think is going to be a daily show, not a weekly. And then you no, it's Howard, a, it's, once, no, it, a once a week it's called, show. Okay. Yeah, it's called Last Week with John Oliver. Okay. So, and yeah. then you give Howard Stern a weekly show, you know, every Friday nights. It's a, almost the same format. You sit down and talk to people for 20 minutes. Yeah. but Or or give him an hour show. Uh, yeah. You know, or an HBO an hour, show. hour show that's, yeah. you know, 40, 45 minutes long and and do it. That's that's a good idea, Adam. You should be programming TV. All right. Haha. It's not TV though. So we've all agreed. It's HBO. It's, HBO. It's, not all, a, it's not television. We've all agreed that it will be Jerry Seinfeld. Next. <laughs> yep. Next. Uh, all right. Marvel. We saw a Marvel movie yesterday. We did. we did. They have movies planned through 2028 now. That is a long way out. It and is. who knows if this superhero thing keeps up. But I mean, you can kind of say it's since 1999. I think that's when X Men came out. It's been going gangbusters the whole time, except for the Green Lantern. And the Green Hornet, uh, anything with green. even with Green Lantern, you had that was still in the era of Iron Man. So I mean, you yeah. had Marvel still. I mean, it wasn't good. Yeah, I, I just mean in terms of it doing well and getting making a lot of money. Yeah, but Marvel has been doing very well. Others, other studios have been a little less successful mm-hmm. to a lot less successful. Yeah. So we've got you know the ones that we know about um, with the Avengers mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, in There's the only movie, three that we know about right now. Right in the movie yesterday, there was a. Uh, Clax on, uh, Jared. Clax on. Uh, I don't have this. Is okay. Just give us this one. Is not a. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> killed. Hold on. He killed the moment. I know. I totally did. I was not trying. You, I was Shane. gonna. Oh God. Where is it? Here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's, that uh, spoiler. Uh, Doctor Strange is mentioned. Is mentioned. Stephen Strange. Right. So maybe you know. You, I, the 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 big thing to start considering is. Maybe they have there we go. lower tier uh, <laughs> characters. Yeah, start getting involved. I think or, I like that as our clock said. <laughs> Old timey horn. Put a note on it, Jared. Um, so doing things like sending movies to uh, Netflix as uh, Netflix. Well, you've uh, got Daredevil. You've right? got uh, you've got uh, Iron Fist. You've got Luke Cage. Iron Fist. Uh, you've got Jessica Alba. Are What's they, her face? Wait, are they Alias. Doing- they're not, are they doing Iron Fist? I believe so. Maybe I know they're, they're doing Luke Cage. I thought Ant-Man. they were doing both. They have, Maybe. A, they have Ant-Man. They have Ant-Man, but that's mm-hmm. going to be a real real movie. Right. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing about about uh, the Marvel movies, Adam, is that you know we talk about how you know how can they keep this momentum up? Uh huh. But and and you always you're always I think you always go into these movies 
thinking this is going to be the time they could possibly screw it up. But with Captain America, they tend they they found a way to raise the stakes again and make you excited for what is coming in the future. Yep. I think that's the strength of the Marvel movies if you want to know the truth. It's it's you're not necessarily in the moment of the movie. You're always looking forward to what's coming up after the movie. I I, I compare that to like uh, the end of The Walking Dead this season where they set it up for what's going to happen in the future and you want to see it now, but you don't get to see it. You got to wait. Marvel's done an extremely good job of making that sort of thing happen in all their movies, and that's what gets people excited about it. Nope. <laughs> Do you agree, Adam? I Yes, I definitely agree. Um, there's, I'd say almost every issue of a comic book kind of works that way, too. Sure. You know, it's like you're looking at a small thing, but you're kind of looking at, all right, well, what's going to come next? Exactly. It's a lot like how wrestling works, too. It's a very, very similar parallel. So, you know, there's talk of, um, well, now they have they own the Star Wars comic book license right along with disney yes right or disney owns marvel so we have all their comic books uh moon knight Mm -hmm. right obviously um inhumans yeah so there's they have a giant well to pull from and with so they have this netflix deal with the smaller less less known i'm so excited for daredevil i just want it to be so i want it to be good (laughs) please i mean as good as the it's the Affleck. Ben Affleck yeah. one. It has to be at least that good. <laughs> Quick pause, right. Adam. Last yeah. night, Jared and I, uh, along with my wife and child, we started watching X Men First Class. Yes. And I have to tell you, Jared, after mm-hmm. watching it again, yes, I think that the Marvel movie universe completely blows that out of the water. I agree. I mean, it's like it's not even all the stuff that I I kind of gave up gave it a pass for mm-hmm. the first time we saw it. I couldn't give it a pass what, this what time. What did you not like? I didn't. I didn't like the characters. Really? I didn't like. I think that you didn't like James McAvoy. I okay. So I, I like think they have some great, great, great moments and some great performances. But I think that Professor X and Magneto in that movie are great. Okay. Yeah. But everything else around it is questionable at best. Mm-hmm. That's what I think about it. The, I think the the plot was stupid. You uh, rightly just hate that January Jones is in that movie. And January Jones is atrocious. She's She's- <laughs> and I and I was talking about this before. I love Kevin Bacon. But I don't think that he was right for that role at all. Um, I think the special effects were dodgy. Yeah, I, I think I think many of my fond memories of that movie are in the, the third act. Sure, I think when they're actually in yeah, costume battling it out, and it's just yeah. like, okay, this feels like X Men. But yeah, getting to that point is like, mm, you yeah, you put it's that a in, rough. <laughs> put I don't that. know. I remember liking that movie. I mean, I know I did I too. I did too. I was yeah, like, yeah, boy, this is the Mar- this is the X Men movie that sets things right. That's what I said when I came out of it. Yeah. Now I don't. I mean, huh. in comparison had, to X Men Three, it absolutely does. Did yeah, Brian but, Singer direct that one too? Was did Brian Singer do? Brian Singer did X the first one and the second one, and, and he's this doing this one. one. Okay. It was Matthew Vaughn who did First Class, and it was uh, uh, Ratner who did X Three Lasting. Okay. Yeah, I just it. I agree with it you. I had the, the same way, man. I had the same feeling. Huh. I'm like, oh, this isn't as engaging as I remember. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of sitting around doing nothing too. I go back to, and I like the kid that played the beast. beast yeah, as yeah. Well. But I, I go back to what I I said before I saw First Class is they should have just rebooted the universe. They should have started over, and and given themselves the ability to play with all of the good characters right from the get-go, rather than tie it so closely into mm-hmm. the original yeah. universe, as, which which was completely blown up in a very bad way in the third X-Men. But and, and as much as we like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, just get someone who's young and unknown and who's going to be in it for the long haul, because yeah. he's coming to the end of his yeah. Wolverine role. He knows it. Yeah. I mean, how, how often can you or eat 24 chickens a day to keep that body mass? I mean, you just can't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Thank you. For once. Anyway, yeah. All right. Say so I had yeah, I was weird that you and I had the same feeling yeah. on that. It was I was troubled. Now I wonder if I go back and watch X-Men 2, which I thought I never was liked it. Good. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I now. didn't like I thought they were okay, but they felt cheap. I remember watching yeah. them. I didn't like the original Spider-Man movies, uh, the Sam Raimi ones either. I, I like the, the second one. The biggest problem it. with the X-Men movies is they just they don't stay true enough to the characters as they are on the page. And at the, the the they play fast and loose. The with Marvel everything. the Marvel Studios films, yeah, they make some changes, but they're still the core of the characters is still there, uh, you know. And and changes that they make are necessary changes to work in real life, like how Falcon is portrayed in the new film. Yeah. Um, his his page portrayal just wouldn't fit with 
you know, a live yeah. action film. But X Men is it's just like they just change characters as they see fit. They yeah. they put characters together who shouldn't be together. Yeah. You know, they have they totally mess up. You know, the Summers brothers because. You know, uh, Alex Summers was supposed to be younger, but obviously in this chronology they're setting up, he has to be much older. Yeah. And how much? I mean, he could be 20 years older than his brother. Yeah. For it really, to work, you really know. And then, I'll, and also, then, remember how they killed Cyclops off uh, off screen <laughs> in X3? I mean, I know no one wants to talk about that movie because it's terrible yeah. anyway. You know what? And I ruining think, Cyclops in general by yeah. making him an asshole. And which, whiny. And, yeah. And, it, I, ridiculous. Yeah, He's were, a, he was a more noble guy than that, and they <clears> ruined it. Yeah. Anyway, they should have started over. You're right. I agree. You know, it's interesting to your comparison is is really good because you can look at the three Iron Man movies, which, you know, have kind of seen peaks and valleys in sure. terms of quality. But I think that if you compare them with the three Spider-Man movies that were made by Sony or the three X-Men movies that were made by Fox, is that who made the... Mm-hmm. Uh, or the, the two Fantastic Four movies. Yeah. <laughs> that's a Fox klaxon. <laughs> um, I don't think that's the song I want, or the, the tune I want. I don't Go ahead. Yeah. The, the the quality and enjoyment levels you can get out of those Iron Man movies is yeah. leaps and bounds higher than the uh, than the Fox or Sony. And I movies. and I have trust me, I've got problems with all three of the Iron yeah. Man movies. Um, but just by sheer tenacity and and the fact that they are made by the Marvel people, I think they they just have it figured out compared sure. to these other movie studios. Yep. Uh, a couple more stories. These won't have any spoilers in them, okay. so we have no chance to, to practice on these. We've got a, a new set-top box from Amazon. I don't know if mm-hmm. either one of you guys are interested in the Amazon Fire TV, if uh, you think you're going to get one. I broke the news to Jared as it was happening, which is unusual because normally he's a newsbreaker. Okay. And Jared and I... didn't I, realize they were doing an event. Jared and I were not are really not that interested. Do either one of you d- use uh, Apple TV? I have an Apple TV, thing, and okay. I, have, I have a Roku. Okay. so I barely use my Apple TV. I don't even know why I have it, other than I think it was to... Allow me to uh, indulge in my my uh, fantasy of getting all my movies uh, on a hard drive, and then I could just watch them at will rather than get up and walk in the other room, put the DVD in right. there. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this seems like uh, it's the same as a Roku. It just will have Android games eventually, yeah. but that are meant for touch screens. Well, it's, it's certainly faster than a Roku. It's got a quad core processor. Yeah. You know, from all everything I've read, it's it's you know, video startup is instant. Right. But no, no HBO Go. Um, Not yet, anyway. Right. Well, guess what? There's no HBO Go on, on the Roku, Roku either, right. which I just discovered. I'm like, oh, that's lame, because now I have HBO, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, oh, I guess I can't use that on my Roku. HBO I guess... Go is on Apple TV. Yes. Yeah. Apple paid big bucks for that. I have the app, but just can't use it because Xfinity's an asshole. Um, to... <laughs> it's true. Do you have an Xbox? you have a 360 still? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can do HBO Go on I that. just Everything's on Xfinity On Demand, too, yeah. so I, don't, oh, okay. I guess it's whatever. That fills the void, and I can work and use it on my iPad for whatever reason. Sure. But, um, if you had an i, if you had Apple TV, you could uh, AirPlay the HBO Go to the Apple TV onto the TV. It's a lot of a lot of. Extra but we'll see what happens. Would I just use it on the Apple TV? I was just uh, Apple TV a, too, right? Apple TV too, yeah. Uh, that would be interesting to see what happens if Apple has an answer. My uh, my major complaint with the uh, the uh, Amazon Fire TV is that the remote is only Bluetooth. So if you're the kind of person who has a like a Harmony mm. Universal remote, F you. There is no IR port that I know of on right. the device, and so good luck setting it up as one of your activities. You're gonna stuck using a second remote, and I think that immediately precludes it from uh, being in my living room. Sure. Sorry. There'll, there'll probably be an Android and maybe an iOS uh, uh, app that sure. can also be a remote, but you know, still... again, you have another thing. So they've been trying to like play up the the gaming aspect of of mm-hmm. this. And they have their own controller that looks like a Xbox 360, sure. 360 controller. And early reviews of the controller are that it is not very good. Um, we've seen this from the Ouya, which came out last year, which mm-hmm. was a Kickstarter thing. Uh, a lot of small consoles coming out that are meant to kind of play Android-based games. Not doing a very good job with the uh, with the controllers. No. And it's interesting, like they're selling it for forty dollars. An Xbox or and a PS4 controller are, are sixty dollars. Sure. Twenty dollars more. It's you know, it's not it's not insignificant, but those controllers seem to, you know, p- people they're know what the they're class. doing. They're exactly. top of the class. Yeah, that's what sixty dollars yeah. will buy you apparently. So anyway, that's out today. Ninety nine dollars. You buy it. Don't care. James Franco uh, tried to pick up a seventeen year old on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, I, I a lot it's of all theories going on with that. That it's just marketing. It's a performance piece. <laughs> it, it's buzz marketing. I mean. 
A big buzz marketing this thing, is, Jared. So uh, this Sky is an interesting, like, long con, right? Yeah. You make the world think that you're a weirdo. A perk. Yeah. So that when you do weird things, they're like, oh, uh, okay. he's probably just being weird, right? Not like, right. not a pervert. Not a... <laughs> I would think that James Franco would be smarter than that. But... Right. Well, I, don't, I guess I have no more to add, Jared. I... Yeah, Jared I haven't follow, I haven't followed the story in depth. If it's true, if he really was trying to hook up with a seventeen year old, uh, not the best behavior there, Mister Frank. Not smart. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are quick to judge before all the facts are in, and they've already you know condemned him. But I've also seen some stories. Uh, I think it was on Gawker who someone makes the case that maybe it is just a, a big hoax and it's a big marketing thing. So I don't know. Being a a an expert in picking up seventeen year olds, Adam, what advice would you give James Franco to make? That work in the future. Uh, don't say you're James Franco. Say you're Jonah Hill. Perfect. Oh, right. Works every time. Here's the... All right. Because then they're going to love you for you, not for your looks. Exactly. Here's some quick advice for uh, celebrities or, or even every man on the internet who's I, yeah. trying to pick up women. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. It's uh, it's probably going to come out that you did that because it's on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Very simple. Smarter uh, words. Of where were you before Anthony Weiner? I don't. Did his. Did his. Yeah, where were you? Anything dying? you think you're doing privately on the internet, chances are if somebody can find out about it. So don't do that unless you're with consenting adults and you're not. You're okay with it coming out. There you go. Simple. That's a simple rule to live by. We've got one more story for All you right. guys. This is somewhat related. Yeah. There was a study. There's studies done every week. There's a lot right? of studies. Just, it's always like, oh, I heard a study that said smoking cigarettes yeah. is good. It's usually about glo- the fa- the fallacies of global warming, exactly. too. Most of them. Yeah. The fall- It's happening, the- Shane. It's just not man-made. Right. It's polar bear made. Uh, right. Everyone knows. Fucking polar bear farts. Polar bears and then they want us to feel bad for them falling off of their icebergs. Why yeah. would they create industry that would destroy the polar ice caps and endanger their own lives? So there Very was, silly. There was a study that came so out. So you polar bear captains of industry, it's your fault. Right. <laughs> I'm, well, talking, I'm talking to them. They are the most racist bears. You're the only one who can speak their language. Yep. Adam, please. <laughs> they are right. the most racist. Get to bear. your story for once. There is. <laughs> Stop a letting study. us interrupt you. This is an important study. Okay, guys, did you see this? Everyone, <laughs> you need to know about the study. All right. A man did a is, study. Is this another anti-vax spiel from you? No. Okay. <laughs> that's 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 next next uh, third episode from now. There is a study that shows the worst places to get stung by a bee on the human body: penis. Right, foreskin. Top. I'm gonna be more wait, specific. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. If I'm allergic to bees and I get stung in my penis, it's gonna make my wang huge. I'm okay with it. Jared will have a four inch wang though. <laughs> All right. Wow. I want to hear top top two guesses Where from each one of you. Worst place to get stung? Yep. Worst in terms of this is just pain. This is just pain based. Pain? So Jared has penis. What else, what's what's your other? Oh, I didn't know we were playing a game. Maybe I want to revise my choice. All right. Tongue. Tongue. Uh, tongue. Give me one more. Eyeball. Tongue and eyeball. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Nose. Nose. All right. Give me one more. Uh, Neck. index finger. All right, you're you're going away from penis. <laughs> oh, you're leaving penis for yes. nose and index finger. The odds of your penis being in a labia bee, menorah being uh, adjacent to a bee are very very. You are very close. Labia majora. <laughs> no, <The> clitoris. <laughs> uh, a guy did this. So okay. first of all, the way he tested this, uh, he allowed himself to be stung. Of course, he and did. then used the. Oh, shit, the pain index, one to yeah. ten. It's, well, there's, it's, yeah, it's a pain index. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's the house of pain. He index. ranks them top three. He had to as jump around a lot. Number three, uh-huh. nostril. I was, I said, you said nose. nose. I said nose, motherfucker. I right. said it too. You both said nose. Oh, did you? You said, you said something in index finger. I said nose and index. Finger. All right. Number two, lip. Okay. Yeah, lip would be bad. Yeah. And number one, Jared went away from it, and I don't know why. Penis. I said penis too. I didn't I real- said foreskin. I was unaware of his his uh, testing methodology. Yeah, like we'd be nude. going into the story, but apparently he was thorough. Uh, he the was origin thorough. of this was study thorough. is is really good. It started when a honeybee flew up Michael Smith's shorts and stung him in the testicles. Oh well, that's what you shouldn't be wearing loose yeah. shorts. That so got, he knew immediately. That I mean, got him thinking. Where's <laughs> the worst place on the human body to get stung? You know, I, I picture this guy in a big glass box. You know, just shutting himself in. I'm going to do this for science. Yeah. Um, if you're wearing, this is a quote from him, if you're wearing shorts and doing bee work, a bee can get up there easily. <laughs> bee but work. I was Who's really, doing bee work? Yeah. I was really surprised that it didn't hurt as much as I thought it would. That is in reference to his testicle sting. Yeah. Right. The penis head sting, on the other hand, was but There's a lot one. of nerve endings there <laughs> yeah. for the average man. Yeah. Is, was it right in the frenulum? What are we talking about? I don't know. And he did not say if he was circumcised or not. So we have. Mm, we okay. Have, so we're missing some information. If you're un, uh, if you don't have a foreskin, uh, you might be in greater danger. I right. want to assume that. Sure. Wow. Everything's out there. 
to be stung. It is. What See about what fire ants? Fire ants? Detect uh, he only did bees. Right. Honeybees <laughs> specifically. <laughs> fire ants. That's his next. That's the next. What study. were the ants that that uh, devoured human bodies in the best uh, Indiana Jones movie? The fourth one. Of course, I'm talking about. I choose. To, I choose to not remember. <laughs> I've only that. seen it the one time. <laughs> well, those ants probably hurt. A lot I would imagine as, they as are. Much. Yeah, they would. Don't hurt. let those bite on your penis head. <laughs> Watching the movie also is an equally. Uh, un, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that guy's death scene is a metaphor for the viewer I think it watching is. it. That's it. What did I say? Probably the best news. That's very, very done. good. You had, we had a lot of discussion. A lot of fun on we that one. We're not keeping it brief. No. Okay, well, let's let's push on yeah. to uh, coming soon. <laughs> Quite a decay on that. Oh, are we on? We are. We're back. <laughs> are we back? Sorry. I was doing homework, too. <laughs> uh, all right, coming soon, we've got some I guess music. I didn't bring my homework. Uh, music coming April 8th, we've got cock... Wow. <laughs> I wasn't even close on that one. Chuck, Chuck English. Wow. Cock English. Cock English. Uh, I don't know who that is. Joan Osborne, the God, uh, if God is one of us, yes. lady. Uh, King Dude. Mm-hmm. I, it's real. I mean, it's a struggle to find music. What do you want? King Dude? King Dude. With the album Fear. What genre is that? Uh, I'm going to guess jam band. What's your guess? I would guess uh, smooth jazz. Okay. I'll take both. <laughs> it's a fusion. Yep. <laughs> uh, Liam Finn and Martina McBride. Okay. Movies. We've got uh, April third. We've got Draft Day coming out, which you've seen. I saw that movie. And did, I did neglected, neglected to do. <laughs> Maybe wow. I'll do one before it comes out. Before Friday. You should no? do that. All right. Too late. Uh, <laughs> I don't even. Oh yeah. I was gonna say I don't even think I gave it a stars. I would say one and uh, three quarter stars. Oh, we've already spoiled. The All Damn. right. The guy gets out of work. I'll probably have passes a couple more times before. Wait, when does that come out? The uh, 11th. April 11th. Okay. This coming Friday. Mm -hmm. So eight uh, more chances to see it. Jared. <laughs> Can't wait. Rio 2. My daughter, very excited to see this A lot movie. of colors in that, in that. Very excited. At what age do kids stop wanting to go to every uh, uh, cartoon movie? I'll tell you, but it hasn't happened okay. yet for us. This will be an interesting... Uh, an interesting and I liked Rio. I'll be honest with you. I, you know, as an Did animated you like the Angry feature? Birds, Birds tie-in? Is that, is that what your mm -hmm. favorite part was? Sure, why not? Okay. Mine not. <laughs> DVD and Blu-ray, we've got August Osage County, the Oscar nominee in yep. many categories. Justin Bieber's Believe. Believers. Oh, boy. The Hobbit 2, The Desolation of Smog. This is interesting. I saw it on the list, and I said, that came out? And then I was like, oh, yeah, we saw that. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, I, saw I never it. saw The okay. Desolation of Smog. Yeah, it comes out the 8th. Uh, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. And Lizzie Borden. Starring uh, Christina Ricci, I believe. Oh, right. Wasn't that... Like a, a TV show, cable yeah. series or something? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I wanted to see that, but I never got to it. Oh, Video well. games. Can't see everything, right? No. Cannot see can't. everything. Uh, we have one that we didn't do last time, so I just want to mention it. The Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, mm -hmm. I forgot about the that. The MMO. Sorry. It came out last Friday. This is a massively multiplayer online mm -hmm. game and getting just terrible reviews. Oh, is it really? Just destroyed. Ouch. Um, is that the sort of thing that might get better over time, or is it just flawed to begin with? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a MMO coming out with a paid subscription service plan when every MMO that's not Warcraft uh, is doing free-to-play. So <laughs> What is it? We got some incoming air traffic? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was you or me. I think it was you. <laughs> You're the one who's riding the bike. Uh, so it's, oh, it's financial plan is, is weird and... Yeah. Well, they thought... Slow leveling up, I hear. Okay. Slow leveling up. So they, the they, they probably thought they had enough clout with s the success of Skyrim that sure. they could just, oh, yeah, we can go pay. No yeah. problem. I think you're right. World has moved on, Wrong. Bethesda. Uh, Titanfall comes out for the 360. A lot of uh, rumors about Microsoft or EA pushing this back to sell more Xbox Ones. Uh, uh, okay. Speaking of the Xbox... Does that mean it's been selling well for Xbox One and they think you could drive more sales? Uh, well, we won't know um, March. I would guess March that it's. Uh, I would bit. guess that it's selling pretty well, though. Yeah, okay. I, I find it hard to find the uh, Titanfall Xbox bundle. ones in the stores. They're not there. So, yeah. and last week you could get the bundle yeah. with game for four fifty, which is yep, so pretty good. That's a pretty good price. Yep, it's a ten dollars savings. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a sixty dollars savings is off it? the four ninety nine price. It was four ninety nine. Yeah, four ninety nine with game. It was four ninety nine, so they dropped it to four fifty. Oh. For a yeah. week. Oh right, right, right. Okay. If you were in, if you're, you're in right. London, England, I don't know why I was thinking it was. Cheaper. I don't yes. know why I was thinking it was three ninety nine. Never mind. No, that's so a PS, Xbox that's a PS4. So with okay, yeah, that's a good it's bargain. A good, deal. good deal. And it's a good game. So, uh, Connect Sports Rivals for the Xbox One. The uh, first legitimate uh, Connect game for yeah. 
the uh, Xbox One. We'll have to see what the reviews are. Yep. Uh, Lego The Hobbit for every system out it there. It is every system. I was too lazy to type up. Do uh, every system. Do you and Audrey play that one? Uh, we are. We don't play the the Hobbit games. Okay. We, we're playing the Lego Marvels game right okay. now. And and that's it, except for one more, which we've held on to. Okay, yeah. For our Be- theme music. Oh, here it is. Jared's I, right never, in I it. forgot this existed. Hit it or miss it. Hit of the week. Hit it or miss it. Miss of the week. Look out! Has not been amended. Sorry. No, I was hoping. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pick my, my. This is my picket. Picket. Hit it. This is hit my it. hit it yep. <laughs> for the uh, for the week, and I'm picking a, uh, it's a video game. This is RBI Baseball, 2014. What? You only have 360 on here, but it's also is it uh, PS3. PS3. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is if you played Nintendo or original Nintendo era uh, games. Mm-hmm. This was there were three of them. Uh, this was the best. Uh, and what was the publisher on this one? Uh, on this one, was this the Tengen one that was? Uh, on, yes, on this the... was the Tengen one. Okay. Uh, it's now owned. I, I think that was Atari's uh, fake. Oh right, right, at right. The time, yep. and yep. so this spun off. Who knows who owns it now? Uh, it's being published by the same people that make the MLB TV app, which people seem to love. They're okay. not a video game uh, publisher by any means. They're also the people behind the WWE Network. So if oh, you interesting. Watch WrestleMania so that, tonight, so you can. That's watch. everything that's about your life, right there. It's, it always comes back yes. to that network. Yes. It's expensive, <laughs> by the way. Nine ninety nine a month. For Nine ninety nine a month for six months, Jared. <laughs> a huge, mm. a huge waste of money. <laughs> it's a huge, and then people are buying into it. Uh, yeah. People if are, you like wrestling, people are dumb. Or if you hate wrestling, it's okay. also fun to just so you can hate watch it. Watch the terrible, terrible. It's a lot of Macho Man. It's, oh, yeah. There's not enough Macho Man, but there's there's some. A lot of Macho Man's best moments aren't in the WWE. But they're in F the or E. They're if they're in the WCW, they have that uh, oh, license also, that's, and the there ECW. You go. So they got it all, Jared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have almost all of it. How much Miss Elizabeth is in the WW network? See, uh, you, what oh, you can do, yeah. they're, they're, they're not fully done with I this I want to do a mean Gene, but I'm too much of a marble mouth to get him out because he's got such crisp diction. You're right. You listen to him, he's like... Bah, gah, 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 can gah, you do gah, a Gorilla Monsoon? Gorilla... <laughs> That's a tougher <laughs> imitation. It is. Well, There's probably not a lot of people on the planet that does a Gorilla Monsoon. You're probably no. right. Uh, yeah, they're, they're tagging all of the pay-per-views and episodes so like if you search for miss elizabeth uh what you'll eventually be able to do is click on her profile see everything that she's in that's... and then click on it and go right to the, the now time. that's smart yes discoverability is king exactly all right and that's rbi baseball <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i forgot that's what we were talking about so we are done with coming soon yeah that means let's wrap it up under, under, under the scope. It's that time, Jared. It is that time. Commentary with Lip Sky. Right? Uh, he actually commented on uh, a later episode, so we oh. won't get to that until later on. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so Why are you commenting every episode? I don't know. Loop, loop school. Because without Loop Ski, <laughs> L- lop school. Without Lip Ski, we don't have any comments on episode 167, which is a disappointment. Very much. That was just the news. We were just recapping what people already know. Yeah. Yeah, all right. If you want to comment, remember, we put out a call to action on this episode, and that is tell us what your favorite scope moment was over the last eight years. From That's what that ranges from 2006 to 2014. Call in at time. 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. You can email us at comments at thescopeshow.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or on YouTube. All those links are at the website at thescopeshow.com. And a reminder, we're up to two supporters now. But if you'd like to support the show... We're really blowing it up, aren't we? Well, you know, baby star. I think we need to come up with some rewards to... Yeah. We need to incentivize people. Okay, bit, I like it. So we'll, we'll have to discuss and see what, what Dick some... Dick picks from Adam rewards will definitely are. be a lower yes. tier. I'm already sending that to everyone that I know. But I'm talking about Patreon. Uh, it is the new hip way that uh, content creators are, are, are helping to fund their endeavors. And uh, ours is off to a little bit of a slow start, but we do have two supporters, so I'm happy about that. We love you, supporters. So you can go to patreon.com slash the scope show if you'd like to sign up. You can... Uh, you you can go for as little as a dollar an episode. What? Hold on. My, uh, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> what? My, uh, Adam and I are stunned. <laughs> what is going, going My computer is recording, but being weird. Uh-oh. It's Wrap it up. Recording. Anyway, patreon.com <laughs> slash the scope show. We'll back to you, Jay. All right, guys. So uh, it's been one hell of a show, a brief show, if there ever, ever was one. If you fast forwarded. Yep. 
Uh, make sure that uh, if you have any interest in our show to subscribe to us on YouTube, download us from iTunes, dial us up at 612. 21 Scope. 21 Scope. I remembered it, Adam. I feel good about it. If you like naughty pictures of Adam, please. You can just search. They're just search. There. They're there. <laughs> They're there. It's a, a subset of the Anthony Weiner thing. Mm-hmm. It's reddit.com slash done. Slash done. done. Slash done. <laughs> slash done. All right, guys. Let's wrap this up. 170 is over. Uh, where's the button? Here we go. For Jared, Adam, I am Shane. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another episode of The Scope. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Buenas noches. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Scope.